In this video, we're going to take a look at the collection of tools to manipulate 3D objects. The 3D object rotate, roll, pan, slide, and scale tools. Now I will mention before we start, the collection of 3D tools are only available if you have Photoshop CS5 extended. And you could choose About Photoshop under Help on the PC or the Photoshop menu on the Mac to determine whether you have standard or extended. Another thing you should check before you start working with 3D objects is your preferences. On the PC, this is under Edit, Preferences Performance. On the Mac, Photoshop, Preferences Performance. When I purchased this MacBook Pro, I made sure to get extra VRAM or video RAM to make Photoshop perform faster. And if GPU settings is grayed out, Photoshop didn't detect a high-end video card, therefore you may not have access to all of the features of your 3D tools, even if you do have Photoshop extended. It's detecting my video card, and OpenGL drawing is on, which accelerates everything I'm doing. Since I'm here, I'm going to change two settings. I typically like to give Photoshop 85% of my available RAM, roughly, and increase my history states. History states are number of undos. Out of the box, you get 20, but I usually find that's not forgiving enough, so I'm going to up this to 40 or 50. You can go all the way up to 1,000. Now, for those of you who don't have 3D programs, the quickest way to get started with 3D objects is to let Photoshop create a 3D object for you. So I have a flat, raw digital camera image, and I'm choosing from the 3D menu, New 3D Postcard from Layer. Once I choose New 3D Postcard from Layer, I can manipulate this image with the 3D object or 3D camera tools. You'll notice I have a 3D model up here that'll let me manipulate my X, Y, or Z axis or rotate or scale the object. Also, I mentioned all the tools we're going to use, the rotate, the roll, the pan, the drag. They are all available right up here, so I don't actually have to go to the toolbar to switch what I'm doing. But, without changing anything, after I've done 3D, new 3D postcard from layer, I can simply click and drag on the 3D object. And now I'm manipulating this in 3D space. It does kind of flip around on you pretty quickly, but that's okay. I really love this effect to actually make what looks like a postcard or a brochure or flyer is casting back on a table. And you'll notice over here, if I zoom in a bit, there's a cube on the background layer indicating this is a 3D object. And it does put a diffuse texture on this. Once I get this at the scale I'd like, I'm going to zoom down with Command minus or Control minus, and I'll hit C for my crop tool. To see the remainder of the image, I simply drew a crop box over the entire image, let go, and now I'm clicking and dragging out to extend my canvas, actually using the crop tool, instead of guessing at the size with image canvas size over and over again. And I can keep doing this. You never permanently crop away image area when you're using the 3D features. It embeds the entire image in the document. So here I could see a little bit more of the image. Now I want to take a look at a real 3D object. So this is just the simplest way to create one. I'll close this and I won't save. Just the letter D will say don't save. On the PC, the letter N will say no because it'll say yes, no, or cancel. Now let's let Photoshop create another 3D object. New shape from layer. Again, just a flat background image. And you have a cone, a cube, cylinder, donut, all kinds of fun things. But I like the soda can for this one. So maybe one day we'll come up with a healthy soda for children. Until then, I'm going to keep my child away from soda. All right. So over here, I'll go back to my 3D object rotate tool. The letter K will get you there. And now I can see my axis a little bit better. I can grab the blue axis and slide up or down by using the tip of the arrow. If I get on this, 
that's actually rotate. So depending on whether you grab the arrow, this kind of bent line for rotate, or the third one down, you'll notice the Z axis, it's scaling, stretching up or down. And I could do that on any one of them. So again, I can grab the tip to adjust the position on the stage. I can rotate, and you'll see the yellow rotate, and this is actually spinning the left and right, the X axis. So sometimes this may be easier to control, and I can scale if I can hit it, but it's kind of facing backward. So I'll try the red one to adjust or stretch the object or rotate the object, depending on whether I hit this to stretch. Hit this little slider. When you see the yellow circle, you're rotating. And hit the tip of the arrow to slide it on the stage. Now, I can switch tools up here to do the same things. So whichever you find easier, you can work towards. And one last thing I can do, scale up or down just by the cube in the center. So I'm going to switch to the second 3D object tool. And then here I have the ability to roll. And roll just slides. Then I have the next 3D object tool, which is drag, kind of like the move tool for 3D objects. The next one after that, and if you pause for two seconds, it tells you what the tool name is. Slide the 3D object, and it actually slides with perspective. So you'll notice, see how it's changing? I could see more of the top of the can. Now, as I move, the surface is coming towards me. As I go away, it's keeping all that perspective. And then finally, I have the scale. And I can click and drag to scale up or down. Now I'm going to pull in an actual 3D object. So Photoshop has a few 3D features that it can create from scratch. The postcard, the shape layer, the new repose. But typically, you'll be bringing in 3D layers from a 3D application. So I'm going to start by doing a new document. File New. I usually do 5 by 7 at 150 pixels per inch. And I could name this, if I'd like, 3D Car. And click OK. And now, under my 3D menu, New Layer from 3D File. So Photoshop doesn't create 3D models from scratch. It does some built-in shapes. But to do the best 3D, you're going to be pulling it in from a 3D application. So let me get back to my Chapter 4 folder and into my 3D Object folder. And you'll notice it lists all readable objects. If I select the car 01, I'm on an alias wavefront. It can also pull in U3D, Google Earth Images, Collada, and 3D Studio Max. So it detected what program Wavefront created this .obj file. I'll hit Open. And now you'll notice it pulls in the car. It has the icon indicating it's a 3D object. I can use, let me start with my 3D Rotate tool, to click and drag and rotate the object. And once I've got it rotated, I can also manipulate the orientation, the X, Y axis, or the 3D program brings in custom views, a left view, a right view, a top and bottom, and a back and front. And it looks like my left and right are swapped for back and front, but that's something that the 3D application program did. So I'm going to hit 0 for orientation and use Tab to jump over to the next field. For Y, I'll type 30 and hit Tab. So you can manipulate these by hand if you know where you're going. And then the Z axis, X and Y left to right, top to bottom, Z being a floating space. So that's in degrees. I can actually use my up arrow key or shift up arrow key. And you won't see anything happening until you hit tab. For most dialogues in Photoshop, you don't have to hit the tab key to trigger a preview. But with the 3D object, you do. Because it's so complex, it needs to make sure you're finished before it redraws the object. Now, if I get this floating side view where I'd like it, I can actually save this. 
Oops, and I should have named it view, but we'll let it go. So I saved it as floating side view, and now I can choose that directly from here as one of my preset views of the object. So that's my tour of the collection of 3D object tools. Give it a try with a 3D shape that Photoshop will build for you. Or there's a lot of shareware and uh, freeware objects out there that you can get. In fact, I think Google has a whole collection of them. So good luck and enjoy manipulating your objects in 3D space.